Hi and welcome back. What you're looking at is a portable anvil system that I designed and it was cut out on a CNC machine and I just picked it up the other day and I'm really happy with it. And the reason I'm showing it to you is because I was really amazed at how affordable this technology has become. The problem with this stuff is it doesn't seem cheap on the surface, you know, because they're handing you a package and they're charging you, you know, whatever that is. Uh, but when you start thinking about it, uh, the work that I had done, which is the equivalent of five anvils, uh, would have taken me over a week. I would have been rummaging through my scrap pile, probably using several hundred dollars worth of cut-off wheels and grinders and welding rod and, you know, all the rest of it, probably burning out a grinder, on, you know, in the process. So what this machine did in a couple of hours um, saved me you know, all that time and effort. So if you sort of put that towards the cost of having this done, it really starts to make sense if you need a lot of stuff done. And another way to look at it is when I started looking for tools back in the early 80s, um, I probably spent at least a half a tank of gas uh, every weekend driving around to auctions and, you know, yard sales or what have you. And, uh, you know, even in 1980s prices, I probably paid for this job back when I was in my early 20s and I still wound up without an anvil. So even though I had to sit down for a few minutes, you know, when they told me what this was going to cost, uh, by the time I started adding in all those other factors, I started thinking, you know, this is really cheap and why didn't I do this sooner, you know? So the size of the plate that you're looking at here is roughly 12 by 24 and it's an inch and a half thick. So the first thing you have to realize is that you're paying for that block of steel regardless of how you use it. So the key to making this work is to make sure that every square inch of that plate is being used for something. So this is the design that I came up with. So you can see the anvil face in the center of the top row. Uh, it's a double horned anvil and I'm going to have one round horn and one square horn. I'm using the waste blocks on either side of the horn to make up the body of the anvil. And the V-blocks are just naturally creating the opening that you need for the hardy hole. This is upside down of course so you can see how the blocks fit together. So this little anvil weighs in at about 40 pounds and the base plate weighs around 60. So depending on how you make the legs for this, you can easily have an anvil unit that weighs well over 120 pounds, but breaks down into small manageable pieces. The two small blocks are going to be welded to the base of the anvil and that's going to allow it to lock into the main plate. All of these holes need to be fine-tuned. I had them cut them exactly the right size without any clearance, so that allows me to grind them to fit the way that I want to. So having the anvil mounted into a square hardy hole is going to allow me to orient the anvil however I want on this base plate. I have two hardy holes in the base plate and one hardy hole in the anvil and they're the same size as the hardy hole in my main anvil. So any tool that I use will automatically just plug into this system. The third hardy hole is an inch and a half square and that's because the plate that I'm using is an inch and a half thick. So if I wanted to cut out a couple of swage blocks I needed to use an inch and a half square peg to be able to lock it into this plate. So if you decided to have something similar cut out out of one inch plate, for example, then you would have to use a one inch square peg because the CNC machine just cuts through in one direction. If you wanted a different size peg, you would have to have it milled down, which is another expense. And I made the base plate large enough so that I can have the swage block set up with the anvil in place. In the center of the hardy holes, I had to punch out a round pritchel hole. I really didn't feel there was enough room on this small anvil for a pritchel hole. As well, that would mean milling out an opening into the base plates, which I didn't want to do. I'll probably drill some additional holes along one edge to act as a bolster plate, but I haven't decided that yet. 
One of the main reasons I went with a base plate like this is because it's going to give me an easy way to mount a vise. I'm just going to bring my hardy hole vise, which you've seen before, and you know it's light. It, you know it doesn't weigh 75 pounds like my post vises. And once it's locked into this plate, it's going to be really solid. And again, this is designed to fit into my main anvil. So once I have these hardy holes tuned up, it'll just drop right in. So that's the basic idea. I had two units cut out, just as you see here. So there's the base plate and the anvil. And in addition to that, I had three other anvils cut out that are just the top row here. And they're just going to get mounted to a separate base plate that's going to be permanently fixed to a workstation. So that gives me three student anvils that I can have permanently mounted to a workstation and I have two portable units that I can bring with me and set up. So it took me a few hours to design all this up. I handed them the drawings, I came back a week later, they put it in my car and uh, I have another afternoon maybe of work to do to weld all this up and fine tune all the hardy holes and I'm done. So. Uh, it was money well spent in my opinion. Hi, I'm Dennis and thanks for watching. If you're interested in supporting this channel, the simplest way of course is to like, comment and subscribe. If you have questions and you want to contact me directly, you can do so by emailing me at either one of the addresses that I have listed here. It may take me a couple of days, but I will get back to you. Of course, financial support is always welcome. The only product that I produce is the information contained in these free videos. So if you like the work that I'm doing and the videos that I'm putting out, and you can spare a couple of dollars a month, consider becoming a patron by clicking the orange Patreon logo at the bottom of the screen. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.